Good morning, my friends. It's Thursday, November 4th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. My cat is by the door, waiting. Hello, honey. You gonna say hello? There she comes. <laughs> and I have with me this beautiful painting, helping me pray bringing my thoughts to the universe and the mysteries of all that God has made. There's a swirling quality to it. It almost could be underwater. Could be little atoms underwater. The universe underwater is a whole nother place for us to contemplate, full of richness and mystery. In many ways, so much of our planet is really undiscovered. Unexplored. I have to admit something to you. Yesterday, I jumped back to the book of Ezra and I jumped ahead one day. So today we have to go backwards and actually do Wednesday's reading because I did Thursday's yesterday. That's very confusing. But needless to say, let's do the Nehemiah reading that was assigned for yesterday. And I promise to not be so bleary in the morning. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've done this. But So we're going to look at this reading from Nehemiah. Nehemiah goes back to the king to report on all that's been going on in Jerusalem. And it's a good report. After staying with the king a while and briefing him, he comes back to Jerusalem, and guess what? When the cat's away, the mice will play. There is a priest named Eliashib who decides that, hey, all these offerings are coming into God. Why don't I just um, set up a room and uh, keep some of the stuff? So he and uh, a fellow named Tobiah, who is a good friend of him, his, kind of make a storage room in the temple and they take stuff. And obviously when Nehemiah gets back, this really upsets him and he throws them out and he strips them of their jobs and he appoints another priest. He also is upset because business people have started doing business on the Sabbath. When people come to the temple to worship, they say, hey, this is a great time to sell some stuff. So they come in and sell their wares. And Nehemiah says, look, this is the kind of practice that got us in trouble in the first place. What are you doing? And he literally throws them out and locks the gates, locks the walls of Jerusalem so that the sellers can't come in and they sleep outside the wall. And then he says, don't sleep outside the wall on the Sabbath. So they finally go away. So Nehemiah is trying very hard to keep the people faithful to their practices to make the Sabbath day a holy time when nothing goes on except for time with God and rest, and to make sure that the space, the temple space, is undefiled and for the purpose of worship and not for anybody else's gain. Nehemiah ends up being really, in a way, kind of like a parent or a disciplinarian. And it just comes to show you how the human being is so prone to wander off and do our own thing, particularly when it comes to our own self-interest. How many times have you said to yourself, well, I shouldn't really do this, but I want to, or it tastes good, or I would love to earn that money, or wow, that's a pretty thing, but I don't need to buy it. We do it all the time, this crossing over of the boundaries into being people that we don't wanna be. It's so easy to do. Nehemiah reminds us of the the boundary, the discipline of trying to be faithful and how hard it is to stay on the right side of that line. And when we cross over, all we can do is say, whoops, let me try again. Let me try to take a day of rest. Let me try to worship without distraction. Let me try to give, serve and all that good stuff say my prayers. And when I mess up and buy and sell and do and get distracted, I'll just try again. 
Nehemiah will push me out the wall. <laughs> Make me wait for tomorrow. <laughs> he was a good man trying to be faithful. Let us pray. Almighty God, you bring us in safety to this new day. Help us to be faithful to whatever practices we would adhere to, to be the kind of people we choose to be, and not to succumb to impulse, greed, or other temptations. Help us to serve you today. Show us what you would have us to do. We ask you to bless the sick, the dying, the hungry, those who struggle with mental health issues or addiction. We thank you for the progress being made on the coronavirus in this country and the world. And we ask you to continue to help heal our planet. Bring us to a new era of wisdom and respect for one another and for this earth that you have made. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.